In episode 27 of Roots of Humanity, I talked to my travel agent G about his Swiss roots and how to globetrot like a pro. After visiting every country in the world and continuing to travel to non-traditional destinations like West Papua, where I was last week, I've always needed someone to score the best flight routes and hotel deals that most people wouldn't know about. That is all to say that G's experience is top level. But what about Switzerland, one of the most beautiful countries in the entire world? Most people think it's extremely wealthy, and of course it is, but G helps me understand that the high wages correlate with the high cost of living, with simple food items going for three times the price as in the United States. So when you do the math, things start to really match up. When you compare to, to other places, sometimes it's just different order of magnitude, but at the end of the month, it's not that, not that much difference. What is it about this seemingly perfect country that makes it one of the best in Europe and the world? For starters, it's a melting pot, just like fondue, the famous cheesy dish that is found in Switzerland. G fills me in about the neighboring countries that influence Switzerland, from the Italian-speaking city of Lugano to the German city of Lucerne, both of which I was lucky enough to visit on my last Euro trip last summer. Tune in to hear our thoughts on Swiss cuisine and chocolate and how to make it as a traveler and a citizen in one of the most desirable places on planet Earth. Thanks for tuning in and let's get into it. Gee, what's going on, bro? Doing good. Doing good. What about you? I am great. I'm here in Prague. I think you're back in Switzerland, right? Yeah, definitely. Just got back from a couple of days uh, by the beach. Yeah, just uh, getting back to, to a lot of work. You're looking extra crispy right now. It looked like you were like a triple well done steak. <laughs> yeah, but I think sometimes it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's just good to spend a few days on uh, away from everything and just relax and enjoy the yeah, enjoy this enjoy some sunshine as much as we can. That's awesome, bro. I want to chat a little bit about your lovely, beautiful, seemingly perfect country. I don't know if you would agree that it's perfect or not. You probably won't because you're Swiss. But to the outside world, Switzerland is absolutely <laughs> yeah. perfect and beautiful. So. Let's dive in. Are you born and raised in Switzerland? Yeah, born and raised in Geneva. And, uh, but then I, I, I got the opportunity to really travel all around the world and uh, did not really stop since I started. But you've never like lived anywhere else besides Switzerland? Yeah, I mean, I, I used to live in Iceland for a while and I spent quite a good amount of time also in the US. Once I actually sp spent almost, I mean, I was just like a couple of days away from uh, from having more than the... 180 something days that you need before you're uh, before you have to file for taxes so yeah I, mean, I spent almost yeah i mean at least one year i spent at least almost one uh, almost six months in uh, in the states so i mean of course over the grand scheme of things it's not that much but yeah i mean i've been traveling and really looking at uh, i've been seeing a lot of other um, cultures and countries and we're trying to to make the most out of it and see in Siri the difference between the cultures that we, I mean, my Swiss background and how people react and how people behave and uh, what they, they discover in, in other countries. What does being Swiss mean to you? That's a very good question. And the thing is, I'm not really sure. I mean, it's uh, the, the, big, the, the, the thing is, in Switzerland, we're a big melting pot of, um, of different places, mentalities and where I live in Geneva is actually doesn't really count that much as, or I mean, not as much as being Swiss as in most of the rest, rest of the of the country, as we have a lot of uh, international organizations and place and, and basically people coming from all over all over the world. There, there's more influence from uh, from other countries than the rest of, of Switzerland, but that's that's a pretty tricky question. Are you proud? Yeah, in a sense. I mean, I'd say would be linked to the ability to travel a lot i mean to travel all around the world there is always this image of swiss being wealthy or rich or whatever you call it and uh, i remember a couple of years ago i went to uh, i went to the maldives with, with my wife that was actually for our honeymoon and there on on the beach we met a couple who was the, were coming from the south of france and as soon as they, they realized we're Swiss. They started asking some questions about basically what, uh, how much it's, what, what are the prices and what are the salaries and, and so on in, in Switzerland. And especially one of them was, uh, was a fireman and she was a nurse. And they asked her about, yeah, they asked us really about the, the wages for firemen and nurses in the, in the area. And so, or at least in, in Geneva. And so we quickly told them exactly how, how much it was. 
and they were like, whoa, that's crazy. I mean, it's about like five times, six times what we're making. So we should move. Uh, we should probably think about moving immediately. And then I said, uh, we told them, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's just compare everything and not only the income, but also how much everything costs here. And so we asked them, how, how, what was the, the price for the, for the rent? And for a two bedroom apartment, they were paying like something like 700 euros or something like this. To which we told him, you know what? I mean, we paid three times the price for the same thing in, in Switzerland. And, and then we, we, we started recomparing. So the taxes, the, the prices of food. I mean, you, 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 you came to Switzerland not long ago. And, and I know that you, you have some yeah, a video coming up about it. But the, when you compare with prices of food, prices of everything, like renting a car or, or having a car or uh, public transportation and everything, Basically, we started really just going through the through our monthly budgets, and at the end of the month, we were about hundred dollars. Uh, there was about hundred hundred fifty dollars difference between them and us. But obviously, they were uh, they were earning a, a lot less, but then their the expense were a lot less. And then we when we compare, so th there is this image of Switzerland of being really really wealthy, and and Swiss people re being really rich, but it's not always no, not always the case. And when, when you when you compare to to other places. Sometimes it's just different order of magnitude, but at the end of the month, it's not that, not that much difference. I have the answer. Well, basically, you have to live in France and then just drive to Switzerland to work and go back to France. Yeah, but then you're, you need to be ready to, to, to do maybe an hour or two in, in your car every day. And commute because commuting is, uh, is a pain. And then basically there's a lot of traffic where people, I mean, there are a lot of people who do this, but then traffic at the, at the border every day is just a uh, Pain, uh, pain. I mean, some time ago, I was working in a, in a company which was in uh, Lausanne, so about um, an hour drive from here. And one of my colleagues actually was coming from France, and he was going through two uh, mountain passes every single day to go to work. So that's about two, yeah, about an hour and a half drive or two hour drive one way, and then the same thing on the way back in the evening. Something that's really cool about Switzerland is. You know, I was just there a few months ago and my video in two days is coming out from how fast can I spend a thousand dollars in Switzerland. I, I went to Lugano, which is so beautiful and it's so Italian. It is so Italian that it's like if you just close your eyes in in northern Italy or in anywhere in Italy and you open your eyes in Switzerland, there's no sign that you're in Switzerland except unless you see a flag. It's that the people act like Italians. They speak Italian. Maybe the food is slightly different. And then you drive to the German part and it's different. And you drive to the French part and it's different. Like, that's cool. Do you know the history behind how that came to be without boring us with a huge history lesson? Like, how did that happen? Basically, it started as a couple of villages who were under attack from, from other, uh, other castles all around. And they decided, okay, maybe we could try just to get together and make a pact that we're going to help each other if uh, if anyone is attacking us and it really started like this in the center of Switzerland. Act, i mean actually close to where you were where you've been so close to lucerne and from that uh, that place then eventually it grew and so they added some extra villages extra places and and it came into uh, and these places became a uh, canton so some kind of uh, smaller states areas or whatever and then adding and adding the thing is we're close to germany we're close to italy we're close to france and so there was always this this influence from the from the neighbors and so eventually some some places decided okay i'd rather just connect with switzerland than with the the other place even though we don't really speak the same language and eventually you get to a place where we have four official languages and we actually use a fifth one which is english to understand each other what are the four so that would be uh, so french uh, german italian and then rumensch which is spoken by only a handful of people mostly in the eastern part of switzerland and it's it sounds roughly like a mix between german and italian but it's its own language i never heard of that yeah, it's called Ret Reto Romansh. It's a national language, so meaning that it's recognized as being an, uh, a language of, of the country, but still it's not, it's not an official language, meaning that not all laws and not all documents have, been, uh, have to be translated in that language. 
But then if I, if you if you look at my driver's license or my uh, my passport or something, basically it's written in, uh, on it. It's in five languages, which is in so uh, so German, French, Italian, Rumensch, and also English. Do you know Rumensch? Absolutely not. <laughs> like zero? Yeah, like zero. But I mean, you could probably find a few few ways. To, I mean, a few. I mean, easily some uh, some good content on uh, on it. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's so so different than uh, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I don't don't know much about it. Is there like one village or one place where everybody speaks that language? Uh, yeah, all or in the the Grishun re region, which is basically uh, the the east of Switzerland. That's that's where they speak the, that language, and most, if not all, of the the, the speak uh, the speakers of that language are in that region, which is actually south of where is the south of Liechtenstein. So that that's the, the that mountainous region. Oh, Bad Ragaz. Yeah, Bad Ragaz in, is in the uh, Bad Ragaz? region. Yeah. So they speak that language. Yeah, they speak German and in Rumansh. Yeah. That's that's the funny thing is that to understand each other, then we we have to try to figure out ways to we have to learn different languages. We have to find ways to also understand that we don't all think the same. The mentality between uh, let's say. Zurich and Geneva, it's not that different because are, these are big, uh, big cities. But then if you compare, yeah, you said Bad Ragaz and maybe, I don't know, Bern or Bad Ragaz and, and, and Locarno, it could be a bit different, even though it's, it's the same country, it's close by. It's, uh, there, there are some differences on the way, the, on the mentality and the way we see things. And, uh, but that makes it for quite an interesting country in the sense that we're always trying to find ways to accommodate uh, the, the differences. Let me put that in basic American terms, what you just said. People act differently around Switzerland. When you go to the German-speaking region, they're very punctual. They're always on time. They act like Germans. When you go to the Italian part, they're louder. They're careless. They don't care. I mean, it's... it's, it's it. Okay, the example is we're traveling with my dog, right? Remember we talked about this? And the hotels in the Italian part, they were fine. They're like, yeah, whatever. When you go to the German part, they were like so strict about the dog in the hotel. Like that's a perfect example. The German uh, Swiss are very rule followers, like Germans. But when you go to the uh, the Italian part, they're just like, yeah, let's smoke a cigarette. Let's just relax. I, I still think it's so fascinating, man. It's hard. It's so normal for you because you're from Switzerland. But that would be like me being in Prague and then driving to a region in the Czech Republic where everybody's speaking Polish, in the Czech Republic. What other countries in the world, and you would know this more than anyone, are like that, where you have like a population speaking, I guess uh, Canada would be one. You have French and English speaking people, but not really because France is not a neighboring country. So it's not really the same. That, that's, a, that's a tricky question. Well, I mean, speaking multiple languages per se is not that, uh, that abnormal. I mean, you've seen me, I mean, you, you have so many countries where there, there might be like one official language and then a couple, a couple more or maybe two official languages and then a lot more that might be spoken uh, on the side. But then with as many differences and different mentalities, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't see any, any other right now. And I'm not again. I'm not saying there's there's there there is not it doesn't exist. I'm just saying that I I don't see which one would which one that would be that would be similar in that in that sense. It's pretty cool, man. So I guess because you have this like mix of cultures that reflects in the cuisine, right? So you have all kinds of food inspired by France, Italy, um, Germany. So I guess. I mean, talking about like cheese, like fine wine, fine cheeses, fine chocolate. That's all really famous. But what what are some of the notable foods that you like in Switzerland or that you recommend? Hmm. So it depends whether you. I mean, what you like. Obviously, you said yeah. As you said, there's a, there's everything. I mean, we have all this this influence from all the different countries. One thing that when you when you Switzerland you have to try is and actually last time we we met in Switzerland you actually I mean I got it you got you to try it is a cheese fondue. So it's melted cheese uh, that you that you sh and, uh, that you that you share, which is pretty unique. Well, yeah, one of the main main options for for Switzerland would be definitely uh, going around cheese, and then there's an, uh, there's another uh, very I mean, yeah, Swiss specialty which is the Rösti, 
which is just like some kind of uh, special uh, potatoes, uh, some, some kind of potato dish, and which is actually quite quite interesting because the, the the line that divides Switzerland between the German speaking part and the French speaking part, we call it the Rösti Graben, which is the border of Rösti. So basically, on, on one end, on the German-speaking part, they eat a lot of these, and, and on the French-speaking part, we don't eat that much of it, or I mean, historically at least. And that, that's, that's a way that we used to kind of differentiate between, the, between both, uh, both sides. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something, yeah, next time you're in Switzerland, if you haven't tried it, you should, you should retry it. And then there are some amazing specialties, like so many small places, small restaurants, small uh, delis who can just, uh, who have some very good things to eat. And yeah, I mean, I, I'd say Switzerland is a very nice place if you, if you like to eat. Also, again, getting back to what we said at the, at the beginning, it can be also a bit expensive, the food, but usually pretty good. Two notes I want to make. One, that fondue place was so good, and I can still smell that restaurant right now. If I close my eyes, I can just think of the smell when you walk in that door. I guess the people that work there, must, they must, their shirts must smell of that like all day long, the fondue smell. Definitely. That's the thing is that when you, when you see a picture of fondue or something, you have no, no, no idea on how, how it smells. And yeah, that's a, that's a smell that really sticks to you. And, uh, and basically, after, after, yeah, after having dinner there, you just though. basically need to, to do a, a patch of laundry. Secondly, on, on the note of Switzerland being expensive, so in my video, the challenge was I'm going to be a normal tourist. I'm going to do normal touristy things. How fast can I spend a thousand bucks? The answer was 18 hours. And that was between gasoline, two gasoline or one gasoline fill up, uh, a hotel in Lucerne, which was 300 something dollars. Then it was like beer and hot dogs and uh, the parking pass, which was $40, uh, parking, parking tickets around the cities, which was $10, $15, $10 each time. It was a um, sandwich meal in Lugano, which was 100 bucks, And I bought a pair of shoes, which I bought like a regular pair of like Adidas running shoes. They're here somewhere. And at ho I swear to God at home, those, these would be like between 120 and 150 and they were 220 here. I don't, maybe I just got like the top of the line one, but it should not have been that expensive. And there you go. Everything I just told you was a thousand bucks. So that, I think I'll get a kick out of that video, honestly. A couple of things you could save, obviously. And, uh, and then especially also one thing is as you are a foreigner, you can actually claim the, 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 the tax, uh, some of the taxes back on your spending. But yeah, I mean, that, that's why a lot of people mm -hmm. I know actually fly to the U.S., to do some uh, some shopping. Basically, I mean, flying from Geneva to New York and back, I mean, pre-pandemic was, I mean, you could find flights for like $400, $300 round trip. So I know people who could just go for to New York for the weekend and they, they do some, some shopping there. You just buy some clothes, buy some stuff, and you save a lot of money on the, uh, on the way and you spend the weekend in New York. Obviously right now, I mean, some of these prices are a bit, bit more difficult to to get, but uh, there's still some some good options. And and then again, also with uh, as a lot of people are trying, I mean, getting concerned about uh, about global warming and 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 the the pollution. Yeah, going to New York for the weekend might not be always the wisest idea, but there are ways to. Yeah. I mean, the other option, obviously, would just go across the border to Germany, to Italy, to or to France, and uh, and do some shopping there, because we, we we can also save save quite a lot. It must be nice to travel as a Swiss person, because almost everything is cheaper in the world, unless you go to Norway. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, basically, yeah, yeah. Most most of the things are, are cheaper. I mean, as I said earlier, I mean, I used to live in Iceland, and there also, I mean, as you had to, I mean. As a lot of things need to be imported, basically, it's gonna be, yeah, it's a lot of things were actually more expensive than here, or at least back when I was there. I mean, right now, I mean, yeah, prices are also flattening a bit on on some products. So yeah, I mean, there's always ways to either just uh, yeah, there are always ways to find ways to save money wherever you go, and. Um, and even in Switzerland, but it's uh, sometimes it comes at a at a price of uh, of your time or some more effort or something like this. But sometimes it, it might be worth it. You're a travel wizard, man. We've been working together for I want to say around two years. Um, 
I met you through Thomas, uh, my good friend Thomas from Yes Theory. I think you, you've been working with them not too long before that. You reached out to them uh, offering your travel help or whatever. I, I also love geography and love wor- talking about worlds and maps and currencies, exchanges and everything. And you are all the above. Like, where did that start? Hmm, that's a, that's a good question. Basically, I always liked, yeah, discovering new new places and uh, and new cultures. And I always have had also this passion for uh, for aviation, for flying. And I actually, have, uh, um, I was allowed to. I mean, I, I got my private pilot license when I was uh, eighteen, but I actually was allowed to fly by myself. Bef- uh, and alone before I was allowed to drive a car even with uh, with someone oh wow that's cool yeah because I realized that yeah, seeing the seeing the world from from above just uh, gi- gives uh, another perspective and uh, and then from that point on it really just uh, grew grew upon me and um, well I have a background as a software engineer and uh, when I, after my, my studies, I started working with for uh, for an American company with, where I was the, uh, was doing some customer uh, customer support on some of the largest video surveillance systems in the world. So we're talking about the subway in Paris, um, subway in New York, some casinos in Vegas, um, and other pl- crazy places like this. So I was basically so when I was working with with, with this company, I was just traveling about 80 percent of my time so when the customers had um had a technical issue they were they had like locals a team of support and and then a regional team of support and when these guys couldn't help basically what my phone was ringing and i was just uh having to check who from me or my team were were to fly there because there was these were all video surveillance systems so highly secure systems you could not access from a remotely so basically we had to to go there so i got to i mean yeah thanks to this job i got to really travel all around the world for um for a couple of years which was amazing especially when you're when you're 25 in your 30s and when you're um, when you're single it's just a great way to discover the world and then eventually things happen and i decided just to yeah i uh, just wanted to to settle down for a bit in, in switzerland and um, and that's it. But that was quite um, quite an interesting opportunity. The issue I had is the company was only paying for uh, for coach, even when I mean, I, and I was going from one continent to the other like every other week. And yeah, I mean, you know, I'm quite tall, I'm one meter ninety six. That's that's uh, six five. And basically, the idea is that I re- realized that traveling like this was super tiring. And I said, okay, how could I, as a good engineer, find ways to make <laughs> my travel better? And that's that's how, how I really got into travel optimization and making first my trips better. And then had some friends and family asking me for help. And and then the rest is, is, is history. Now it's a business. Now it's, I turn it into a business, yeah. Yeah. Now you help myself, uh, Yes Theory, other content creators primarily. Those are your biggest customers, right? Exactly. I mean, there are a couple, a couple of other... Um, other other companies which are more let's let's put it this way typical where it's just uh, like a typical uh, flights or travel and it's uh, sometimes a bit uh, simpler uh, but then uh, yeah what what I like working with content creators is the flexibility and the and all the kind of uh, fun ideas that needs to come out of uh, out of a travel I always told you this but if we worked together when I was finishing every country, your mind would have been blown by the flights that you would have been booking me, bro. Central African Republic, Eritrea, Vanuatu, like Kiribati, all every single country that you've seen that you've heard of, and you're like, wow. I, I think I would have set the record for the most obscure bookings. But unfortunately, we started working together like when I finished the countries, or no, I hadn't finished yet, but I was like almost finished, and. My last two years of travel have been extremely boring compared to my, the, the previous five years. And so I'm, by the way, I'm really yeah. itching to, to start taking some, like I, I have Chad and Papua New Guinea on my radar for the next few months. So I hope you'll, I, I don't know when's the last time you booked a flight to Jemena, but I'm guessing never. As far as, I mean, I, had to, I, I could check in my, in my files, but as far as I remember, it should be about a year and a half ago. Or I mean, it was just, just, no, I mean, about two years ago, just before the pandemic. When actually one of the, my first customer, when I really started going full-time into this travel business, was a company who, 
who is organizing startup competitions all around the world, but they do it in developing countries. So then they're, they're not looking for flights, let's say from uh, yeah from Paris to New York, but they're looking more for flights from uh, from Maputo to Denpasar or to or to Kathmandu or places like this, and making it a lot more yeah I mean some kind of very obscure places and destinations. Hey, you know what's a good video? We should have a contest where we have like an empty map and someone just names a country or a capital and we have to place it on the map. Me versus you. I think that'd be a good match. Could be fun, yeah. Could be fun. Could be fun. You, you <laughs> might actually win on some of the countries, especially, um, I mean, especially, if, especially for the cities. But you might win on some of the places. And another thing we could do, I mean, another thing we could do, I sent you a video the other day uh, of this guy who was trying to, to, to circumnavigate the world in as quickly as possible with the, the smallest budget. It could be kind of fun to do something similar, but maybe add some other twist to it. Like making but the sure thing that is, we hit. I don't want to just sit on airplanes and airports. I want to do something in each place. Exactly. That's, that's what I said. Is it basically add a twist to it so that we, we should at least hit every, every continent. And then on each of these continents, do something which is typical to that place or which is not typical to that place or something like yeah. this. I really want to go to Alert Canada. So let's start getting the ball rolling. I know it's hard. Alert. Northernmost settlement in the world. Exactly. Like, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tricky one because, be yeah, as, uh, as we talked about already, I mean, the, the big issue with this place is the, is the fact that it's, an, uh, it's a military base. So getting access to it is a, is a bit tricky. And then they don't have flights very often and their, their flights are managed by the, by the Canadian military. So, I mean, people have done it. So it's feasible. So if you and I cannot do it, uh, I'm not sure who can do it. I like that. I would love to go with you. Uh, obviously, it's easier for me. That's also a challenge for, you view, for, for, for your audience. Is that okay? If we cannot do it, I mean, not many people can do it. So yeah, show us that you could do it. I like it, man. I I'm very interested to travel more of Canada. I'm going to Montreal next month for the first time for Deanna's birthday. I, I could easily get to Toronto or wherever to fly up north. Where would it fly? F where does a plane fly yeah. from to alert? I think they fly from, from clo close to Toronto, yeah. They manage from, from one of the, the air bases. It's probably like a eight hour flight. The big thing is it's actually in some military planes. Let me check. Um, there's, that was called the Operation Box Stop. So they use this, uh, this, the cargo aircraft from the military and they fly from, uh, from where is it? While you're looking that up, I'm going to say something. So just so people can understand how helpful G is, he's literally like my second brain. Any situation, like, hey, I need to get from here to here. He's able to hack first class. I got uh, Star Alliance gold on Scandinavian Airlines, which is used all over the world. Marriott, he gets me like $200 off hotel. Like this guy, I've never met more of a travel hacking wizard. And I just want to thank you for all the hard work that you've done. I know it's fun for you, which is awesome. It's a great partnership, but man... Everybody needs a G in their life. Thanks. Thanks. So, yeah, so they're basically leaving, from what I understand, from the Trenton uh, Air Force Base, which is close to, yeah, it's between Toronto and, and Montreal. They fly from there, then they might, they, they, they stop, they, they might stop also in Thule in Greenland, and then they continue to alert. It stops in Greenland? Yeah. That's cool. To refuel? From what I understand, yeah. Let's see. Uh, so Trenton. That's super cool. I want to go to Nuke. Is it hard to get there? From you just fly from Copenhagen, right? To Nuke. Uh, yeah, to Nuke it's uh, super easy. I mean, you fly from Copenhagen, and uh, it's a direct flight. It's uh, very uh, super straightforward. Then there might be some uh, other places which are a bit more complex to to reach. Yeah, when I w went to Greenland, it's actually I, w I flew. Uh, that was when I was living in Iceland, so I flew directly. There was a direct flight, but then we had to take a helicopter to, to the place we were looking for. And yeah, pretty, pretty fun adventure. I kind of like also these kind of uh, crazy uh, adventures where you have to, yeah, not only just go from point A to point B, but really find crazy stops on too. the way and crazy ro routes to, to make it work. Gee, this has been a really great chat, man. I know we could chat all day about travel, but thanks for your expertise. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for sharing the love of your country. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk again extremely soon about some of my upcoming trips. And, uh, and, and uh, hopefully, hopefully I can see you in, uh, in Alert Canada pretty soon. Yeah, let's, let's find a way to, to make this work.
Cool. Hey, thanks a lot right, for, for having me. It was uh, pretty fun, and it's uh, yeah, let's uh, let's make it work sometime, somewhere, and for for something fun. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast episode. If you feel inspired by this conversation, please share it with somebody who would enjoy listening. And if you're here for the first time, make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Also, don't forget to leave a review. Every week, I'm going to be looking through them and highlighting my favorite one. And with that all being said, I will see you guys next week.